So is it just me or does pretty much every YouTube tech reviewer out there seem to concentrate on the really premium, shiny, sexy smartphones that most common folk couldn't afford without ripping out grand's teeth for those precious gold fillings? I mean, come on, it's 2019, people, and no longer do you have to sell off bits of your anatomy or bits of your family's anatomy to upgrade from your crappy old iPhone 5. Two ton is more than enough for a solid all-round smartphone with a decent camera, dependable battery life, and smooth everyday performance. I've personally reviewed a whole bunch of smartphones costing under £200, and here's my pick of the best around right now as we approach the end of 2019. And for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, one of my absolute favorites when it comes to affordable handsets right now is definitely Motorola's Moto G7 Power. This mobile's main selling point is, of course, its frankly insane 5000 milliamp battery, which means that it beats even most premium priced flagship phones for longevity. But of course, the power isn't just a one trick pony. You also get a punchy 6.2 inch HD Plus display, a nice slice of stock Android Pie, and some bonus motor bits that are proper good, all wrapped up in a pretty durable polymer glass frame, which can be snaffled in a couple of different colors. The 12 megapixel camera does struggle a bit in low light and with HDR scenes, but that is pretty typical for this price bracket. And to be fair, you do at least get the option to shoot up to 4K resolution videos, while Motorola has added in a bunch of decent camera modes like the funky spot color effect. You can grab the Moto G7 Power here in the UK right now for 179 quid. And if your fancy has been well and truly tickled, then check out my in-depth review here on Techspert. And I'd also like to give a big shout out to the Moto E5 and E5 Plus, which are even more affordable at 120 and 150 quid respectively. These more compact mobiles still boast that HD Plus display tech and cope well with everyday existence. And you can check out my full comparison on this channel to see how they stack up for specs and the rest. Now you may not have heard of the Realme brand before, but the Realme 3 Pro hit the UK back in June, and it really impressed me with its solid hardware and its feature-packed software. Starting at just 175 quid, the Realme 3 Pro is a big rival to the G7 Power for the best budget phone crown. Battery life may not be quite as strong, but the 4000 milliamp cell should last you well into a second day before a recharge is finally needed. The Snapdragon 710 processor offers smooth performance no matter what you're up to, and you also get a dedicated game space feature courtesy of the Color OS launcher for blocking notifications and the like when you're getting your PUBG on. Even Realme's camera punches well above its weight, capturing vibrant looking snaps in even quite testing conditions, or recording 4K video on demand. And all of that glorious tech is wrapped up in a shiny glass casing, which packs a snazzy yet subtle S-curve effect. Another cheapy blow which launched early 2019 is Sony's Xperia L3, which just 169 British pounds represents pretty stunning value for money. The L3 is a big step up from last year's L2, showing off some impressively smooth performance for a budget handset. Sure, it's just a MediaTek chipset stuffed inside, but it's backed by 3 gigs of RAM and it copes perfectly well with apps, media streaming, and even a bit of light gaming. That 13 megapixel rear camera is bolstered by a basic depth sensor for capturing accurate bokeh shots, while you also have an 8 megapixel selfie snapper to take some beautiful photos of that pretty face of yours. And you can shoot away all day thanks to the 3300 milliamp battery which supports Sony's adaptive charging tech to prevent long-term damage. Sadly, it is the older Android Oreo on board rather than the latest Tasty Pie, so the Xperia L3 isn't fully up to date. And the Xperia L3 also lacks that super tall 21 by 9 aspect ratio of the rest of Sony's new smartphones, though we still really like the relatively compact design, especially Sony's effective edge mounted fingerprint sensor and that Gorilla Glass 5 finish to keep the screen in tip top shape. Definitely no complaints with that punchy IPS panel either, which pumps out crisp, colourful visuals. Next up is the Nokia 6.1, an Android 1 blow which can be picked up for around 150 smackers these days from the likes of Amazon and Carphone Warehouse, and with two guaranteed years of OS and security updates, the Nokia 6.1 should stay fresh for the interim despite the fact that it is getting on a bit. The everyday experience is pretty slick, with Qualcomm's Snapdragon 630 chipset running the show backed by 3 gigs of RAM. If you like streaming media, you'll especially love the sharp Full HD Plus display, plus you get a bit of micro SD support for downloading movies to enjoy on the go. And I definitely approve of that rugged yet smart finish of the 6000 series aluminium frame, which stays true to the Nokia brand. And at just 5.5 inches, it won't quite split your seams when you stash it in your shorts, despite those chunky bezels. The 6.1 definitely feels like a proper wide boy these days. And sure, the Zeiss branded 60 megapixel camera has its limitations, but you can shoot some good looking photos and video in decent conditions, while your home movies will boast some impressive spatial audio thanks to Nokia 6.1's dual mic system. Alternatively, there are plenty of other Nokia branded handsets for around this same price point, offering that same squeaky clean version of Android and the guaranteed OS updates. 
One such offering is the Nokia 4.2, which is newer than the 6.1 and costs the same, but also cuts back the specs in a couple of areas. It's not exactly a powerhouse, but the Nokia 4.2 is still fine for everyday use. The 5.7 inch display may only serve up HD plus visuals rather than full HD, but it's still a punchy panel, and you get a dedicated 3.5mm jack for plugging in your earphones. A dual lens rear camera serves up plenty of features, including a dedicated live bokeh mode and auto HDR smarts as well, so it is pretty good for your everyday snaps. And there's also a dedicated physical assistant button, which is great news if you're constantly bugging Google for help with your everyday existence. Go check out my full roundup of the best Android One smartphones of 2019 to see how these Nokia phones stack up against the competition. Last up is the Huawei P Smart 2019 and the Honor 10 Lite. And now I've lumped this pair together because they're essentially the same bloody phone, just with a different name. Both the P Smart 2019 and the Honor 10 Lite cost bang on 199 quid. They both have a 6.21 inch Full HD Plus display with a teeny weeny water drop notch up top. They run on Huawei's Kirin 710 chipset with the motion UI slapped all over Android, which makes for occasionally juddery performance, although we do like a lot of the bonus features that Amui brings. And no worries with battery life is you get a 3400 mAh cell, which can keep you going all day easily, even with a good bit of gaming and video action. And last but not least, on the back of both blows, you'll find a 13 megapixel camera, complete with a depth sensor for portrait shots and a bugger load of bonus features to play around with. Video quality ain't particularly sexy, sure, but we're more than happy with the photos churned out by both of these mobiles. Now one sub £200 smartphone that I sadly have not yet had a chance to review is Samsung's Galaxy A20e, which for just 170 bob offers a reasonably compact finish and some pretty decent specs. That 5.8 inch display almost completely fills the front, serving up punchy HD visuals, while the 13 megapixel camera is backed by a 5 megapixel wide angle lens, something you don't really see too often at this sort of price point. Samsung of course does not have any Galaxy A20e's available for review, it tends not to concentrate much on the budget side of things for its reviews program, but don't worry I'm going to try my very best to get my hands on one really really soon for an in-depth review, so stay tuned. So that right there is my pick of the best smartphones you can buy for under £200 right now here in the UK but did I miss off your own particular favourites well definitely let me know down below bearing in mind that these are all available in the UK right now from the likes of Carphone and Amazon uh, so I haven't covered any stuff that's only available in other regions uh, but definitely let me know your own personal picks down below and uh, for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers everyone love you